morning guys here yeah, day 11 we are in bay island here yeah, in new zealand this is our last stop in the two days cruising back to sydney and then go back to usa all right here we go bay island we are ready grab some breakfast and head out to the tours excursion all right let's go bye all right up our ticket here and ready to leave. Thank you. Alright, here we go. On the way. I'll go follow them. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning guys. Morning, morning. 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 Oh my god. in the tender now Friend, you famous. I always see you every day. How, How are you doing? doing? All right, I'll see you a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. Got to the shore here. Bay of Islands, New Zealand. For our bus. Nice man right here, New Zealand guys. Yeah. All right. Hey. Coming out here from the ship. Line up. Waiting for our bus. Anyone on Now we're just waiting for our bus. This is our, our group right here. Hello, can I have Hello. one? Of course you can. Oh, how about two? Me and my wife. Yeah, of course. One. Hello buddy, how are you? <laughs> Good work. You've not taken a photo today. Look at photo? Yeah, of course. See. Alright, here we are. We'll be doing your guardian and driving. And then we have Shane, who's our quality assurance member. More than I said, how are you all? Today. So rest assured, we'll be all on our best behaviour today, giving you the fun in the next. So um, what, um, the description that you got on the boat isn't as clear as I'm going to explain to you now about what we're going to be doing with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off from here, which is Waitangi. We're going to take you through Pai here and to Opoa. It's an old fishing port and uh, we're going to get on the car ferry and cross over to Russell. Now most people think that Russell is an island, it's not, it's a peninsula, but the water goes all the way down and it takes us another three hours to go down and come back up. So we go on the car ferry, which is only a seven minute journey, and then we'll go back into uh, Russell, which is just over the water there. So when we get there, Kelly will take you around on our, uh, our, our mo motor part of it, the bus part of it, for an hour. When we finish that, we'll then go to the Swordfish Club, which is a big game fishing club, and uh, you'll have your morning tea there with beautiful views over the bay. And from there, you'll be collected by um, a member of staff from the um, museum, and they'll just walk you around the corner to uh, our Marai area and tell you about um, some of the historic uh, things that went on around that area. Across to the church to have a closer look, and then you free. 
<laughs> this is the airport right here. Where the locked is in, I've just so gone up there. So it's just in a building, uh, an area just uh, beyond uh, this motel, just to our right. Now James Busby was very important back in the day. Um, he was involved in choosing the flag back in 1834, uh, writing the independence back in 1835, and also involved in writing the treaty back on the 29th. we celebrate Waitangi that happened on the 6th of February back in 1940. Every year they have a meeting here just to the right. Oyster man. It's TT Marai just coming up on your right hand. Sows as well representing some of the chiefs of the right to the end of the wharf there so they used to be able to catch it to flooding all the time so uh, in time they stopped uh, mining altogether uh, beyond Kawakawa and so the rain line yeah going to the, 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 the highland bike 
was actually here back in months and then it went down to Auckland. So at the top of this hill you're going to see a rock to the left.
we're just going to pull into town. Welcome to Russell. It's quarter Attica. So we're just going to drop Michelle off and then we're going to continue with the hour tour. And when we get back, I'm going to drop you off at the Swordfish Club for a nice cuppa and a muffin. <coughs> Now, when drinking the broth, he said, how sweet is the penguin? And that means kōrarātaku. So we're known as Russell or kōrarātaku. So back in um, 1769, on the 7th of October, around 2 p.m., Lieutenant James Cook and his crew rediscovered New Zealand. Now, they did start off in Gisborne, and then they made their way up here to the Bay of Islands, and they anchored off an island called Robertson Island, made out of here. They were here for roughly 10 days, traded with the local people, food, water, did repairs to his boat, and then he surveyed a little bit more of New Zealand. He actually left here on the 1st of April, 1770, and headed across to Australia, but he didn't touch the land till the 26th of April, Botany Bay. Now, after Captain Cook, we had a lot of whalers into the town, a lot of Americans, and we also had a lot of ship jumpers and ex-convicts arrive here. So back in the day, they used to bring those prisoners from England across to Australia, a lot of them jumped ship and ended up here. <laughs> so you could imagine all those whalers and all those ex-cons, this town become very unruly. At its peak, they do say that we had over 70 grog shop and brothels in this small town. <laughs> and that's how we got that name, the Howl Hall of the Pacific. <laughs> now in 1805, we did have a ship that came from England. There was 150 on board, men, women and children. 19 died on that voyage, and a half months to get from England to this beach in front of us. But they did settle here in the bay. Now, I talked about that first capital being here back in 1840, 41. It was only here for 10 months, and then it went down to Auckland. Now, when it went to Auckland, the trade left Russell, so the town died. It was in Auckland for 20 years, and then they moved it to Wellington, and it's still there today. Mm. Waitangi. We talked about Waitangi as we came across, so that's just straight across the water there. You can see a flagpole in the far distance. Mm -hmm. Now, that's where... Um, the treaty was signed between the British and the Māori. Now today we're going to hear a little bit about Honeheke and he definitely wasn't happy with that treaty. Flagpole was chopped down a few times. But this town here in Russell has actually been burnt down many a times. So no homes here in Russell are the original homes. The only thing we have today is the oldest church in New Zealand, 1835-36, and that Pompalia missionary, 1842. And they do say that we only have them because they benefit the people that religious side of it. Now I do want to comment that it wasn't just the Maldives that burnt the town down, White Man Ramsack was town too. Become the general store. It is now the oldest operating that general store in New Zealand, this one to the left. It has been in the Baker family for seven generations. It's operated as the oldest store, but they now operate as a gift store now, so this one does take its place. But I've got to say that stone store is an amazing one to pop into. Now next door, straight upstairs, you've got the Bay of Island Swordfish Club. Now they're the second oldest swordfish club in the world. Up and have a look. Now if you are looking for some yummy food today, I do recommend the butterfish. Now if you're a Max Kiwi to the left here and you're buying souvenirs, just before you pay for it, tell them that Captain Cook came in 1769 and he'll give you a locals discount. Oh, okay. Now over to your right, you've got this big beautiful tree. It's called the Bahutakawa tree. And there are, they are our New Zealand Christmas tree. Now they do flower around November, December, January. So it looks stunning along the waterfront. We've got them up in the hills. Everyone's got one in their backyards. It's definitely a magical time of the year. Now just coming up on our left hand side, we've got the gables. Now the gables originally was down by the Duke of Marlborough Hotel, but it was burnt down. A shoemaker, it's been a salvation home for the boys. It's been a private home. Now just coming up on our left hand side, you've got the Russell Town Hall. This was built in 1953 on the Queen's Coronation. Now we were having over 60 cruise ships coming to the Bay a year. So at our local markets in the Town Hall, prize giving, flower shows. Now over to the right, you've got the old cannon. 
Now that was last used in a battle against Tonihiki and last fired from that spot in 1917. Now I definitely do recommend after the, after the tour to come for a walk around town distance. So just coming up on our left hand side we have the Walker's Passage. Now it is free to visit but this land down here was actually gifted a cottage at the end of that pathway but of course the town was burnt down. Now the only thing that remains from that cottage is the old chimney and they mm. made it into a brick seat. But back in the day they used to get the convicts to make bricks and to identify their bricks they used to put their thumbprints in them. So you'll notice quite a few thumbprints in the brick seat and there's also some pose down there dedicated to Tamati's family. Now this cute little cottage to the left here was built after the town was burnt down. 1853 Cody Copper Piping Whalebone Foundations. It is a holiday home, you can rent it out. Just to our left, we have one of the original whale chase boats. Six men would have been on that boat. They would have shot that harpoon, got their whale. When the whale passed, they would have cut the blubber off it and then mounted it in the cast iron pots to the left. Now, if it went back to America, it went straight back in barrels, but if it went to any other country, it was processed on the island first. Now, I just want to point out my house. Beautiful. I know, no, it's great to dream. It's great to dream. <laughs> now, to the left is our local marae, Haratu Marae. And this flag that's flying right now is the Takata, the United Tribe flag. So this flag here is legally recognised as a New Zealand flag by King George IV. Now this flag started off as a trading flag in 1834, <coughs> and our New Zealand flag that we do fly today started off as a trading flag in 1869. But both flags are legally recognised as New Zealand flags. Song building. These guys in here are the Kaitiakis of the land, the guardians. They've been releasing birds out onto the islands that have no possums, stoats, rats or cats and the birds are breeding well. Now if you go onto their site, you can click on all the different birds and get all the different calls. You can donate, you can plant a tree, do check it out. Now to the left here you've got two beautiful homes that are owned by the same family. First one you can rent for $800 a night, the second one only the family uses. Again, Cody, Copper Piping, Whalebone Foundation. Eight hundred dollars a night. Now they do January of the Maldu religious texts. Now a woman acquired this building. She bought plants from all around the world, but when she passed, she donated it to the New Zealand Historical Trust. And back in 1990, they renovated it back to its former glory. So if you want hands-on history, they still do the printing in the tannery. Shop and give shop in here. You're more than welcome to visit. So now to your left, on the other side of the water, you can see the place years old. Waitangi, and you've got a tent to the right, and straight in the middle there's another high pine. Now that pine there is up by the new tent house, and that's the one that Busby's wife planted back in 1836. So roughly in Russell, and when it's winter in New Zealand, they go back home for the summer. Helicopters every two years, they spend one week here. They ask you to update their wine selection, and then you don't see them for another two years. So quite a few here today. It's got musket holes in the walls from the battles, beautiful inside the church, beautiful on watery cushions, and those headstones definitely do tell some stories. Primary school. Now this was built in 1892, and that's the older buildings in the middle. Now Kororataka Primary School goes up to year eight. It's like 2,000, 2, about 2,500 years old, but it's had a lot of trees around them. Little calf, hell hole, and to the right, you've got the naughty penguin if you want to be a bit naughty later. But straight in front of us, we have wood to waters. This building here was built in 1930, and it was the oldest operating petrol station here in New Zealand until 2014. Now, the Baker family owns this building, and they also gave us the land for the library and the museum. To the left again, great little trading shop. To the right, food bar, gift shop, coffee shops. Johnny Johnson owned this back in 1827. He was an ex-con. He had it as a grog shop and a brothel. So it's not the original building, but it is on the original site. And the Duke does bring a lot of business to the town. And so I'll be back in two days. Make sure you're back here. And you've got to remember back in the day, the water was the road. That's how everybody got around, down, down as they left. They call it the Girls' War, and it happened back in 1830. So Wahini is a female, Tane is a male. Now we also had a cannery in Russell in 1889. This house straight in front of us was the manager's house. It was here for 17 years and they used to can mullet and can fruit. 
Just to your right, the little cottage in the front there was a kid set home that came from Auckland. And he had 13 children in that little house. So do Google it after the trip today, because they are great to make with the children, grandchildren. Some people are really arty. But what it is, it's like a letterbox. You cut up some bamboo, you place it in, and you're doing your bit. <coughs> even the motorcyclists are saying they're not getting many bugs in their mouths. All those little bugs pollinate our trees. But just to the left, we've got an amazing walkway. It's called Jim. Yeah, guys. One of the uh, point of view here in the hills. They stop before I take pictures. Uh, I think this area called Russell, New Zealand. A lot of history here. Okay. Let's go up to that hill over there. Our tour group. It's the tallest point here at this uh, area, Russell, Taurus Hills, there. Very nice. Many, many people that would like that. <laughs> See how she from here. New Zealand. Beautiful hillside, luscious greens everywhere. This is the high, highest point of this area, huh?
Und das so Mini Tours. Very beautiful small city. Alright, just about to head back now. Let's go. Some grandchildren living in the one across the road here. And she is quoted at saying that this is the best of you in New Zealand. So they renamed the road Queen. islands that you see directly across from us are actually seven different islands mm. so these islands here are extremely significant in regards to project island song all seven of these islands were declared pest free in 2009 we're now returning wildlife back onto these islands that have been missing here from our northern shores for up to 200 years so the birds that you see on those islands now you see nowhere near <coughs> in Northland a uh, very successful program beginning of the year is over 1,000 of them just on one of the islands mm. so uh, great success our kiwis that are in this area uh, which we regarded as an endangered species they are now they have been taken off our endangered species list looking to translocate some of those birds onto the mainland to try and create a bit of genetic diversity mm. no one wants them mm. so now this is an issue that we now have to look at for the whole of the nation, as well as relook at the way we do uh, restoration work. Uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, no one wants to kill a kiwi either. Uh, so it's a lot of thinking. So we're using a lot of our, um, a lot of knowledge that we have within our Project Island group and working with Doc to see if we can resolve some of this. Try to bring them up and then join them back together. <laughs> Got a few on the fence, Arnie Rowe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> years old and they definitely don't make homesteads like this anymore. The most recent work done to this homestead was the Bowen 8. They run it as a bed and breakfast and I've got to say it's stunning inside. Now he ran brothel ships out here. He'd have up to 50 whaling ships out here a night and he would charge them one musket gun a night to stay in his bay. It's a very clever man. Um, we recommend the museum and also that Pompalia missionary. Oh, thank you so much, very oh, much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you're most welcome. Yeah. Are you going back over there or no? Uh, I might pop up and just say, Oh, I see. Yes. Let's go check out the show fish club. Hello. Sure, thank you. Grab a seat here. Get down. Yeah, next one. Uh -huh. Wow, this is cool. Go, go, go grab the tea for coffee. Very nice. But now we're here at the, uh, the Soul Club. And that's our bus right there. They drop us off. We can uh, tour in this little area here. Let's get some uh, coffee, cup of coffee. Society in 1918 
and on the 8th of February 1924 became the Bay of Islands Swordfish Marco Shark Club. Uh, does anyone know of Zane Gray? Yeah. Yes, good. So he was an American Western author who was a prolific fisherman and had a love for New Zealand. Uh, he was actually invited here uh, in 1925 to promote, uh, to promote sport, sport fishing and okay. tourism yeah. out here in the Bay of Islands. We uh, purchased the club rooms, the first club rooms, which are actually down on the end of the wharf here. It was just real small at that time. Um, and then over time, obviously. Take care. <laughs> Same to you. Yeah. Did you get a chance? Check, check me out. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, wow. All right, let's go. <laughs> Some tours.